bit in his face. The woman is likely not to respect him. Mm -hmm. The woman will grow wings. And so to be able to clip those wings and have the woman, you know, wrapped under his fingers to, to control, they will say, oh, don't worry. Don't feather your education. Oh, don't start that business. Oh, don't do this and don't do that. And they would cater for you. Mm -hmm. And by so doing, they have you wrapped under their wings. They control you like a puppet. That is not something that men should be doing. But listen, that's what I think, and I've shared that with you this morning. I want you, as you listen to us, tell me this. First of all, is there anything wrong for a woman to become financially independent? Is there anything wrong whatsoever? Join us. Send, send us your views and your thoughts on this matter. Our WhatsApp number is 055-11-11995. I take the number again. It's 055-11-11995. Listen, if you're a woman or you're a man, all the th three things that have been narrated or touched on, speak to any of them. Why do some women think that it is the, the man's responsibility to take care of them? Is there anything wrong with that? Two, women who are hustling and rubbing shoulders with men just so they become financially independent. Is there anything wrong for a woman to become financially independent? And of course, the last one, men who think that if a woman should become financially independent, she will rub it in their face. Is that really the case? And so therefore, they don't want to help the woman or women to grow and you know to become financially mm -hmm. independent after our conversation today if you're a woman i pray that you learn lessons so that between between now and the end of 2023 you have your own financial you know uh, uh independence and i have my guest with me <laughs> boss good morning good morning and how are you I'm doing fine. i'm doing so well yourself i'm well thanks for asking and like i said her name is adjoa fosuya osu for you so i stick to osu, 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 osu for you. <laughs> and like i said she's also the ceo and the founder of women's haven africa what is this women's haven africa all about all right so women's haven africa is a female innovation space and then our focus is that we are able to increase the participation of women and girls in entrepreneurship leadership and technology mm. We live in an age where there is a wide gender gap when it comes to the inclusion of women and girls when we talk about entrepreneurship, when we talk about leadership, and then when we talk about technology. So Women's Heaven Africa is doing its very best to be able to bridge that gap by providing these women with enough capacity to realize who they are and be able to impact the world. We're trying to create a home for every young African woman with a dream mm. by also bringing together all the resources and an enabling platform that they need to be able to thrive. So that's what Women's Haven Africa has been doing since 2019. So if you know of any woman who's not tuning into Love Night and Up on 5 FM right now, tell mm -hmm. that woman to tune in because there are some goodies, <laughs> goodies exactly. coming, coming their way. Exactly. How do you reach out to these women anyway? How do you identify the women who want to become entrepreneurial? How do you address the challenges they have? How do you help them? to stand on their feet? Yes, so um, we are operating in Ashanti region, but then our focus is to be able to support every young African woman with a dream in Africa. And then we do not work alone. We work with relevant actors and players in the ecosystem. When you look at the entrepreneurial ecosystem, there are various players. Even the media is a key component of it. And then we are able to leverage on partnerships and then collaborations to be able to reach out to the people that we need. We have been supporting mostly unemployed female graduates mm. and also other marginalized women who need the support. And so through some of these stakeholders, both the local and then international stakeholders, we are able to reach out down to the grassroots, the kind of women that we want to support. So depending on the focus or the thematic area for the project or the initiative that we are running, we are able to identify that, okay, this project is for uh, market women or this project is for headquarters, then what do we do? Since we do not have access to them, mm. we are able to work together with the access and players at the marketplaces to be able to bring these people together. And media has been a key component when it comes to our recruitment and then awareness creation. So we are working with the media, um, I mean, social media and also the traditional media to be able to reach out to the kind of women that we want to support. How do you, how do you support them? Is it with education? Mm. Is it with finance or capital? How, how do you support them? Yes, yeah, so it's very important to understand the kind of needs, I mean, of women. And for us, operating in a female space is quite um, different from other innovation spaces that are supporting both the men and the women. So we need to be able to do a real needs assessment to find out what kind of need 
that these wo I mean that that these women have mm. and be able to support them and you realize that most often the key thing is capacity building and for me whenever I talk about capacity building for women the first thing I talk about is confidence self-esteem you realize that we have we, we actually in uh, in an era where we meet a lot of young women who have a lot of dreams and vision but sometimes they cannot confidently even communicate mm. and talk about what they are dreaming about so as you listen to us this morning if you're a woman mm. you have a dream on your heart you want to become financially independent you want to own your own business you want to become entrepreneurial ask questions of all who are here and you get the right answers she's exactly. right here for you she's here for you <laughs> And that's what we're doing this today. It's, it's all about women, women, women. But listen, I asked a few questions a while ago. I want to hear from you as well. Is there anything wrong for a woman to gain her financial independence? Is there anything wrong with that? And why do some women, instead of working hard, rubbing shoulders with men, to gain that independence, why do some of them sit back, relax, and say, well, yeah. You know, so let's talk about this together. Send us messages on 0551111995 is our WhatsApp number. And um, you can also join us on Facebook on LUV 99.5 FM. And um, saying, if you have questions, let's hear from you. If you have messages saying you want us to read it out, you can also join us on Facebook with your messages and then we shall read them out. Now to the crux of today's conversation. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about financial independence for women, what do we really mean? And how are the Ghanaian women doing in that space? How well are they doing? Mm. All right. So for me, um, beyond just financial independence, I could talk about financial sufficiency mm. or financial freedom, mm. where you are able to accumulate enough wealth, where you don't need to worry about meeting your needs. And then also your future is somehow settled. I mean, the, the lame man's understanding. If you are able to accumulate enough wealth, you are able to fend for yourself now. You are able to purchase what you need. You are able to cater for yourself. And then you have a plan for the future. You know, most often when we talk about financial independence, people are thinking about the fact that you need to be a millionaire or a billionaire. But then I feel that it's more about self-sufficiency where you don't need to depend on an external person or you don't need to depend on any um, um I mean, ex external source to be able to do what you want to do and be what you want to be. So for women, we are looking at a particular point in time where we are financially free. We can decide to attain whatever highs we want to attain without depending on an extra person or feeling that to be able to get there, we need to acquire some wealth or some extra support from someone else. So it's not just about becoming rich. Now, in, in our local contest, I mean, looking at women, I, I feel that there is more to be done. A lot of women are doing well, but culturally, there is this orientation that um, um, for women, you don't need to really go through a lot because at a point in time, you are going to get somebody to come in to help. I mean, in our homes, there is like, um, so you don't really need to strive ahead. I mean, we have seen our brothers, we have seen other guys move away from home and say they are going in search of greener pastures. Some go through a lot just to make ends meet and to, to be able to support the family. But then what happens to the woman? We just want to be home, maybe after university or secondary school. We feel like it's time for me to get married. Definitely when the man comes, he's going to provide for me. I will be living in the home. Why do I need to acquire property? Why do I need to save? Why do I need to invest? So because of that cultural mindset, most women feel that they are okay. So they are not ready to really fight to get to the point where they are independent. But then there is a lot more and a lot of reasons why, especially for we women, we must be financially independent. Share those reasons with us. Yes. So number one, I feel that the same way that Ghana is um, aiming towards independence, financial independence, you're saying that we are going beyond AIDS and all of that. Women are actually making about 50% of the labor force. And then when you look into the MSMEs, you realize that women are around 44%, which according to MasterCard research. And you realize that, I mean, let's go out there from our homes to the neighborhood. We see that most of the small scale or medium scale enterprises are being managed by women. But then the issue is that we are unable to scale. 
So the same woman who used to sell charcoal, after 20 years, you still go back to your area and she's still selling charcoal at that same skill and then they are not improving. And so you realize that this has become an issue for us. And so if women are actually a backbone to the Ghanaian economy, contributing so much in agricultural sector and then other other very important sectors then it means that the same way that ghana is aiming at financial freedom and independence these women who are the backbone must also strive there i mean looking at the sdg sdg goals sdg 8 which is talking about decent work and economic growth you realize that very soon we are getting to 2030 we are just in 2023 and in just seven years time we're actually getting there and the question is are we really getting there why are women who are trying to be entrepreneurial mm. or trying to do something for themselves will sell charcoal mm. or sell that watch for all those number of years without improving mm. or adding on what, what is the challenge in there number one is mindset and when it comes to financial independence or financial freedom the key barrier we want to break as women is our mindset it's not enough just i mean understanding i want to be financially independent so i want to go to the bank and invest i want to save it starts from the mindset understanding that it's your right to be free financially you have every right to own whatever space you want to you want to own and so knowing that you don't just need to settle for less mm. you don't just need to be where you are we must aim higher and sometimes i feel like it's because maybe some women are really not exposed and there are not many mentors and people inspiring some of these people mostly when you get to the field you get to rural areas and you meet some of these women maybe the only person they are looking up to is that shs girl who has just completed school and has a baby and has maybe a baby daddy who is taking care of and that has just become the model but you realize that when you get there and they see that there is actually more behind just the four corners of that area they realize that then i need to strive ahead so most of them who move away from those areas coming down to the cities realize that there's actually more going on mm. and so the mindset is one thing that we need to work on all right so you've given just one reason yes just one you give him no. you you'll be given us a few more reasons why yeah. it is so but let's let's conclude on this one what will it take mm. for that charcoal seller the watch seller that rice seller who's been selling yeah. rice all her life in that corner mm. what would it take for her, for her to scale up and do better mm. so the key thing is that we need to provide an enabling environment that would foster the growth of young businesses for women and when you come down to ghana we need a right environment a right political environment we need a right entrepreneurial atmosphere and when we are talking about these things we are talking about the tools and the resources we see a lot of capacity building going on i mean every time government agencies ngos a lot more is just going into capacity building so the women go through the training they are just trained they come out they don't have the tools to work mm. and so it's not just enough building capacity doing women empowerment we need to give them the right tools so okay. if you are training them to sew after that we need to be able to provide them with the tools they need to be able to do that so we need the right environment we need the right policies that will promote women's inclusion in the economy the right policies that would help them assess financial assistance and financial opportunities. We should be able to reduce interest rates. We should be able to work with the banking sectors and then other key players to be able to ensure that there's a right environment and there are equal opportunities, mm. even at the work Did you say equal opportunities? Because this is a male-dominated mm. world and male-dominated environment. I, I don't agree. You don't agree? Yes. I mean, if, if, if two people apply for a job, Yeah. It is an opening somewhere. Mm. The probability that a man will get it is higher than that of the woman. There are many things that come against mm. the woman, you know, goes against the woman, and therefore, mm. based on what I said, that we live yeah. in a male dominated environment, and therefore these things happen. We'll talk mm. about that. It's part of yeah. the issues I want us to address. But you've given, given us one reason. I want yeah. you to add a few more reasons why the situation is so. And we interrogated as to how mm. we can improve upon it. But before you give me the second reason, in case you just tuned in, this is Love in the Morning. It is on Love Night and Up and Five. The whole of the year, this month, January, we decided to bring to our listeners what we call the Love FM Finance and Investment Clinic. Our main aim is to help people have control over their finances mm. this year, 2023 and beyond. 
and also help people to do the right investments. All right, we want you to do better this year than you did last year. We, we have had several conversations, several conversations. Today, we want to talk about how we can get our women to become financial, mm -hmm. have financial independence. And I've already enumerated three things. That there's one group of women who to them, they think that, well, once they are women, they have a breast, they have something, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it is for a man to cater for them. They leave every responsibility of theirs on the man. And uh, Uzu Fusua says that it's because of the cultural, we be, cultural beliefs, the orientation we've had, that and that mm -hmm. is why it is so. Listen, to that woman, if you still believe and think that way, 2023 should change your mind. You ought to do something extra, gain your financial independence. And we salute many other women out there who are, you know, rubbing shoulders with the men. They, they are having their side hustles and doing so much more for themselves. Mm -hmm. And they're doing so fine out there. Sometimes some people refer to them as very for when you saw they do now we throw shades at yeah. them. But they, they're doing so well, although there are challenges they face. And then there's a third group where men think that well, if a woman should become financially independent or free, she will rub it in his face. Yeah. He would she would not respect the man and all that. So some men now have the view that listen, why don't we clip their wings? prevent them from growing, mm. expanding, and becoming financial, financially independent. Listening to all these three, what do you want to speak to? Any of the things I've touched on. Is it wrong for a woman to become financial, financially independent? Is it wrong? Why, why should women even th sit and think that it's for a man to cater for them? As you're a man, how do you feel hearing this? If you're a woman, are you that type of a woman? Listen, join our conversation. 055 is our WhatsApp number. Share your thoughts with us. We are equally live on yeah. Facebook, on LUV. 19.5. Ask questions, make contributions. Let's all grow together in the year 2023 and beyond. So what other reason can you give? Yes. So I, I also think that women need the right incentive to be able to attract and retain them in entrepreneurship. We have worked with more than 700 women over the past years. And one thing you realize is that there are a couple of them who, I mean, come in with a lot of zeal and passion and along the line, their businesses collapse. I mean, there's actually a statistics that show that in the first three years of every startup, they are likely to fail. And you look at some of the reasons, and this is because they don't have the right environment and there are no incentives that are attracting them and then retaining them in entrepreneurship. Now, what are some of these things you are talking about? Somebody starts up a business and then the next thing the person has to do would be maybe to register their business. And some of these young entrepreneurs would have to go through a lot just to get some of these regulatory bodies to help them in their certifications. We have a couple of young women who have great products that are doing well out there, but they are unable to scale. Why? Because they do not have the right certifications. And some of them, it takes them years before they are able to get their product certified. And so if they are not certified, you can't scale. Even in Ghana, not to talk about exports. And so this is some of the things that is really for so limits is it for just, them. Is it just for women? Or cuts across for both yeah. men and so, women. So this this particular reason actually cuts across. The other thing uh, maybe I will talk about is also the fact that these women are really not being um, they are not given the kind of um, let me just use the word Anna and then we are not putting them in the right position. As you said, most people find women to be weak. And so even when they are into business and then they are a bit confident or they are really confident, they are outspoken, we feel that they are so proud. They are, they are just there to um, fight their fellow men. And then they are really not there. People want them to actually calm down and then try and fit into spaces that people have created for them. But then we, we find some women who are ready to create their own spaces and work in them. And so because of the way we see these women, people try to block their chances and then prevent them from assessing some opportunities. So you see women in the workspace who deserve a particular amount of salary, but then just because they are women, seeing that they are weak, they feel that maybe a man in that position could have done better. But then at this point in time, we are looking at skills and competence. So that aspect deters women from actually going all out because they know that no matter what height I get to, somebody somewhere will tell me that if I don't sleep with him or if I don't give myself to him, then I would not win that contract. And so these are some of the things that deter women from going all out 
and it's something that is not attractive. See what I said before, the build dominated mm. environment? Yes. But, <laughs> <laughs> but have, have, having said this, how about the home? Mm. Would you say that the home is playing a role in all this? Because we're raising children mm. and we're raising the boys different from the girls. And, and when the girl grows, mm. it affects her in a way because her That's thinking me. is that, well, if I do this, if I do this, we can say I do this, we can say me when I do. Would you say that upbringing is also creating a problem? Yes. Yes. I mean, everything starts right from the home. Most of the people, well, I am uh, the second of four girls. I didn't, I don't have a brother, but then I see, yes, I see other women who grew in homes where they had brothers and there were even brothers who were younger than them. Mm. But then there was this kind of um, picture that was created to say that once this is a brother and he is a boy or he's a guy, you must accord him every respect some wash for even their younger brothers some cook for just the fact that is a male they feel that they are entitled to some privileges and um, um i mean responsibilities some some treatment of, of a sort so right from the home even if it's a younger brother and then mommy or daddy is leaving money home they'll call the younger brother and give the money to the younger person so unconsciously you are telling this lady that the man is whether he is old or whatever he is the best person to handle money so unconsciously we grow up and then anytime women have their monies they feel that i need to give it to the man the man is the best person to utilize the money he's the best person to look into the money and know how much is going into the bills and they feel that they do not have the right or enough knowledge to do that and i feel that even if you are married and you realize that your, your woman has enough knowledge and skills in financial management, and there is nothing wrong handing over the money or listening to her, agreeing with her, discussing financial issues, and then also understanding that whatever she comes up with could be something viable and then something that would help the family. But then if we grow up with that mentality, then it means that even in the home, Anytime there is money, go to my husband. Anytime there is financial issues, when my husband comes. And if this continues, then it means that we have already accepted that women cannot handle money, women cannot manage finances, and every time we need a man to come in. You know, the last thing you, you just touched on, yeah. dovetails into what I was saying earlier mm. about the fact that some men will not allow this because yeah. of how the women would do it. And so mm. I'll come back to this, this, this one anyway. So you've, you mentioned something that even when women have fine products, they have mm. challenges with certification. Yeah. I'm happy that you said it cuts across. How can women, you yeah. know, manage that aspect of things and get the right certification? Because if you're not careful, then you're allowed some of these pressures and these yeah. uh, pulling down syndrome deter you from pu yeah. pulling through to bring your products out. Yeah. You'll not be able to succeed. How should that bit be tackled? Yes. So, I mean, we, we, we thank God that now there are almost about 60 innovation and tech hubs in Ghana. All over Ghana, every region at least has one or more hubs. And then these innovation hubs are there to ensure that they are supporting young entrepreneurs and then they are helping them to assess the necessary um, registrations, certifications that they need. And this is because the hubs have very strategic partnerships mm -hmm. with governmental agencies and other non-governmental agencies that can help these young entrepreneurs grow. Even just in Kumasi, we have hubs like Women's Haven Africa, we have Kumasi Hive, we have Hapa Space, we have Fab Hub Ashanti, um, Wizi Academy and then a lot more. All over Ghana we have all of these apps. And then now the government also has come up with business advisory centers. So every district there is a business advisory center where you can walk in and then they can provide any support. So I think that if you're a young entrepreneur out there, get yourself connected to some of these apps. If you're a woman in Ashanti region, your number one place is Women's Haven Africa. Mm. Once you come in there we have um, partnerships and we have relationship with the FDA and then all the other regulatory bodies where mm. we can help mm. you to get your product mm. certified. Okay. Now, I just want you to, take, you to take a minute. You've touched on it briefly. I didn't yeah. ask that question, but you touched on it mm. briefly. Why is it important mm. for women to have this financial independence we're talking about? Number one, inclusion in decision making. 
it's a key thing. There's one main reason why we need to be financially independent. That mindset. Uh, I mean, I even if you go, you 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 are in a in a relationship or marriage, and then there is that feeling that the woman has nothing to bring on board, and then the man is the only one providing hundred percent. You realize that personally, you are not encouraged or motivated to share, and then you are not even listened to because the other the, the question is. What are you bringing to the table? And so that is what people say. So we, we want the woman to grow up with the mentality that you are fighting for yourself. You are developing for yourself. You are striving harder for yourself. It is not for a man. It is not for marriage. It is not for anything. You don't need to, to, to be married before you assess certain properties. You can do it even without marriage and all of that. So we want to be involved in decision making right from the home. Beyond the home, we are also talking about society. Mm. You realize that women who have been able to build themselves up enough are listened to. People give ear to them. People are call them their respect. They are able to share. People feel that they have something to bring on board. I always tell women that don't feel entitled because you are just a woman. Because you've gotten to an age that people are looking at competency and what you can also bring on board. And that is why we need to develop ourselves. So if you are not willing to be financially free and be financially independent and still be under somebody before you can do whatever you want to do, then we are going to be limited. But then just last year, um, um, International Women's Day, we said we are breaking the barrier. And one of the barriers is financial um, 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 abuse. Now, financial abuse in the, in the such that most of the abuse cases that are coming out I mean, we have worked with Dofsu and then several other organizations that are working for human rights and women rights and all of that. And you realize that one of the key things, most of these women who are being abused are women who are not financially independent. And these women are still staying in abusive relationships and marriages because when they leave, they have nothing. And so if you are a woman out there, even if you are being provided billions of money or whatever, there will be a point in time where you need to stand up for yourself. Mm. And at that point in time, if you do not have enough finances, if you are not very strong and that you are not free financially, you would have to stay because you need to fend for yourself and your children. So what are the uh, opportunities that, have, that exist? Mm. You know, give us some practical opportunities that exist for women because I'm sure that a woman might be listening and say, Charlie, I'm interested. I would want to yeah. do something for myself. I would want to gain my financial independence. Mm. How do I go about it? Where do I start from? What are the opportunities that exist? Mm. Speak to that for me. Yeah. So maybe I'll talk about how can you actually be financially independent? What, what, what do you to leverage on what do, Yes. So I've already talked about mindset, which is the first thing. And I'm sure that everyone listening to me here would now have to reorient our mindset. We need to change the mindset. Another thing is that most of us are always looking at how much is coming to us. And what money is coming to us but we are not looking at how much money is going away so number one is that if we really want to be financially independent then we have to consider the income and then we have to consider the expenses that are going out looking at our spending habits i feel that we don't need to have so much to say that i have so much and that is why i'm financially independent we are talking about financial sufficiency where you have enough to cater for yourself and you don't need to rely on any external support to be able to do what you want to do. And then when you sit back and relax, you know that your future is being taken care of. Is that to suggest that even when you're being given, you don't take it? So you, you have your financial independence, you're solid. Yes. You are married, you're going out. Is that to suggest that you don't ask for things or when you're giving, you don't take it? So we are, we are saying that we don't want you to be dependent on what is coming. So if you are dependent on what is coming, and if that thing does not come, you cannot survive, then you are not financially independent. But should you ask, even though you are independent, should you ask, should you, should you ask your man for yes. it? If you, are in, if you are married. Yeah. Yes, if you are in a marriage, it's a shared responsibility. Okay. And so I'm bringing something, the man is also bringing something we mm. share. And that does not mean that you are independent or you are relying solely on the man to the okay. extent that if the man is not bringing his part of the deal, mm. you cannot survive. Should 
Would you encourage women to also have a side hustle? I mean, they have their own main business they're doing. Yes. Yeah, so maybe maybe they have their house yeah. to cater for and all that. Do they have their side hustle? So that's actually one one other point to um, financial independence, having a very solid stream of income. And then the stream of income does not mean that you work eight to five here in the evening, you are going to do 10 to um, 1 p.m. You, do, you are not sleeping. A lot of women are having multiple, multiple streams of income. Mm. And that is one way to go. You cannot earn all the money you want maybe from one source. And so one thing that you can do is having a side hustle. And in this side hustle, some people are actually earning more from their side hustles than the main job. And so for a woman, a woman, I would want you to really look at skills that you have that you can actually commercialize. Example. So example, there are people who grew up growing up, they had sewing machines at home. They know how to sew, they know how to do little patches here and there. You are in the workplace. I am I'm doing an eight to five job. I'm running my own business. I have a sewing machine in the house. I do fabric earrings. I sew, I do a couple of things. And these fabric, fabric earrings, I'm able to export some of them and it's getting me a lot of money. Okay. There are other um, 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 contracts I have with other agencies that sometimes give me more money than the eight to five job I'm doing. Mm. And I am still able to do all of that in that, in that time frame. So you can look into yourself. Is there an extra skill I have? Some people know how to talk very well. So how can you work with that gift you have? By just talking, mm. doing voiceovers. I mean, being in a media space, whatever, presenting is something that you can earn money from. If the man in your life is unwilling to support you grow, mm. and yet you have that desire, you yearn to grow, but a man says, oh, you're the woman, you ought to take care of the home, you ought to do this, you ought to do that. How do you handle that bit? How do you manage that bit? What do you say to the man? How do you convince him to, to have your back? Mm. So everything starts from the relationship stage. And if you're a young woman listening to me, Everything starts from the relationship stage. You must know the kind of man you want to marry. And this financial independence, we need it right before we even get into the marriage. And it has to start right from class one. Our parents have to teach us how to save, how to invest. They should, you should save. When you're able to accumulate a lot of savings, your parents should invest it for you. And so when you get to a point in time, you know that I need this kind of man, a man that is not intimidated by my success, mm. a man who is not intimidated by my financial freedom. I mean, if you are a man and you have a woman who can handle things, you are not around, you've traveled and she's paying the bills, she's doing everything. Are you not happy? Are you not fulfilled? Do, do, do women manage it well enough? Do they rub it in? Because that's one fear that men have. Mm. Are women able to manage it well when they have that financial independence? And, you know, funny enough, women are very good managers right from home. We had mothers who gave birth to maybe a lot of people and maybe there is this young girl who is just 15 years or 13 years. But then the mother leaves home and is this 13 years who is taking care of the other kids. You see them even with the other babies at the back. In class one and class two, we see people selling needle, people selling cocoa tea even in the class and these things tell us that right from childhood women are very good they are saving we have this susu box that we save right from there so management has actually been a, been a thing about women now when you get into the marriage and you realize that the woman the woman does not have enough financial knowledge what do you do you share it's not about the knowledge mm. so the woman has her main job okay has a side hustle mm can afford her own stuff. Okay. Now, she thinks that when money comes, me can be. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. You know, I can afford my own car. Even when she's want, she wants to buy a car, she'll not even tell the man, I don't understand a car. So what I'm asking is, are women able to manage it well? When they have this financial freedom, okay. are they able to manage it well yeah. such that it doesn't affect their home? Okay. It doesn't bring rifts between you and the man. Okay. So I think that we should not associate financial independence to the at attitude somebody can have nothing and still show you pepe in the house someone can have nothing somebody's beauty alone the person will use it to show you pepe with nothing i like the way you say pepe yes <laughs> like <an idea laughs> so pepe. it's not a fact that the person has money or the person is financially independent if the woman is respons um, responsible if the woman 
respect if the woman um, um, understands the role that you both play in the home. It doesn't matter how much the person is earning. Okay. And when they have the money, what should they use it for? Support the home, huh? Well, as to whether they get it, another matter together. I will be activating the phone lines right okay. now on 03220. 83596 03220-83597 and 03220-83598. Um, I want to hear from women. Are you are you are you financially independent? And we'll be talking about the dangers and the risks of not having that financial freedom. Yeah. The risks and the dangers that come along with it. So hmm. but you suddenly has a question. Yeah, um I actually have three. Um, so the first three one questions. Is, okay, so let's let's go to the phone lines. I'm told that uh, we have callers coming through. Don't worry, Leo. Don't don't, for, don't forget it. I, I, you you ask the questions anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them have been on the line for a minute or two. We don't want their credit to run out. It's about financial, you know, uh, independence. So we make sure, want to make sure that we protect their monies for them. All right, Leo. <laughs> don't worry. We'll come to you shortly. Christoph, good morning. Hi, Chris. David. Yes. Good. Morning. Welcome. Yeah, good morning. I hope you are fine, sir. I am well. I am well. I am. Well. I, I I love the the woman in the studio. I love the way she's speaking. I believe that if all the ladies would think this way, I think that uh, this thing will not be there. David, research has shown that in Africa, about eighty percent of women date because of surviving. That's it. Survive. But they, they feel that the, the, the only way they can survive is that a man should come for me and all that. And that's why we have even professionalized prostitution. Uh, we call it slave queen. It is a worrying trend. And I think that it, it depends on the way we are training our young ladies. We tell them, one day you marry, you marry a rich man to take care of you and your father and your mother and your sibling. And that is wrong. You should begin to work on the psyche that life is more comfortable, David, when you rely and depend solely on your own self. David, she made a profound comment, and I think that we should have a look at it. He said, if you rely on the woman so much that if he doesn't bring it, you can't leave, then it is very wrong. And so we should begin telling our young women from, from, from school that, Look, you can do it yourself. The Bertin Conference says that what men can do, women can do. We can do it more. So when you begin with telling them those things, at least that they can do well. Thank you very uh, much, Christopher, so for joining can, us. They can help and, um, us. I would like Thank to hear from the women. We're talking about financial independence for women. So where are the women? Join us now. 03220-83596-83597-83598. I mean, some women think that it's a man's responsibility to take care of them. They are there. There's another group of women who think that, well, they have to hustle and work hard for themselves. And then there's that group where the men think that, listen, child, we have Mohammed on the line? All right, so let's speak to Ishak. Good morning, Ishak. Hello, Ishak. Hi, Ishak. Good morning. Hello, good morning, Dave. It's Ishak, welcome. Let's hear you, sir. Yeah. Dave, uh, our woman on your, over there has been superb. But I think that some of the things are, uh, he was very exaggerative about uh, how uh, women should be respected, uh, even in the family and all that. Yes. Even in Islam, a, a man qualifies to marry when you can produce uh, clothing, shelter, and food. That tells you that scripture is even giving a man a role, and a woman a role. That the woman should be submissive, that the man should love the wife. So some of these things are, are scriptural. But in as much as we want our sisters, the ladies don't forget they are our sisters, our mothers, and our wives. So when they are financially uh, independent, it, it comes back to us. But I think that there is so much emphasis on uh, finance, 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 and uh, most of our families are dying uh, with uh, our culture. Because one thing is also is to help bring up children. But a lot of emphasis on finance, finance, finance. And any time we want our mothers and the ladies uh, to encourage them to come up. They take it as a, a, something that you cannot deal with. In the end, 
uh, you have to do this by for I mean, we are encouraging them that you can do it. Let us all encourage them to do it because if my mother is financial independent, I will benefit. The, the male much, will sir. benefit. If and my you. wife is financially independent, the husband, I will benefit. Let us encourage them. But they should also take it that because of that, they are matching us good for good. Thank you very much. God didn't create us the same. He uh, gave us so different rules. Call us on 0320 83596, and 03220-83598. And um, somebody in the studio is disappointed that the women are not calling. We're speaking about <laughs> women here and their financial yeah. independence. Even if you're having challenges, even if you have challenges, and ask questions, we would be able to, you know, give you the right answers that will help you get out of the challenge you're having. So give us a call. Let's talk together. Um, George is on the line. Hi, George. Good morning. Good morning, David. Yes, sir. Uh, George, let's, David, let's it's very your... good for you to bring women in this your program. David, it is we, the men, who doesn't want to give the women chance to operate. We look down at women. David, a woman can use 500 Ghana CDs and take care of herself, and we have two children, single handedly. David, even in the Bible, there were these two women. Their father died, and because they were not men, their property was going to be taken away from them. The women stood on their ground, and their things were presented. It got to the prophet, and the prophet, I mean, contacted God, and their property was given to them which were their rights. So women must stand up for their rights. If you look at in the political field, we don't want to give the women chance for them to operate. Look at what, where this nation is financially. It is we, the men, who took this nation there. So we must give women chance for them to operate because they are best managers. Thank you, David. Well, thank you very much, George. And um, it's all about women this morning, but we've had only men calling. Uh, where where are the women? Are you financially independent? Are you a woman who thinks that it's, it is a man's responsibility to, to cater for your needs? Or you are the type of woman who is hustling and working so hard, rubbing shoulders with the men out there just to become financially independent? Or you have cut out to a man because he, he, he doesn't want to see you succeed. And therefore, it, it's, it's preventing you from growing and you have succumbed to it as well. Let's talk together. And men, is there anything wrong for a woman to become uh, fa you know, financially independent? Yeah, let's study. Okay, so my question was, you know, as you were, you were talking, you, you talked about the fact that um, women are being chased around the desk and, and jobs and mm. all that. And, and I want to know what the, the contribution of womanhood has been in, you know, rising other women up. For example, let's uh, uh, take sports, for instance. Yeah. Uh, we always talk about why people are not going to see women games and all that. But what are women doing to, to contribute to that, to raise that? And two... One after the other. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, women are really doing a lot. They're, they're, I mean, as I said, with the, the, the story about other young girls taking care of their, their siblings, you realize that women always want to push people forward. So we have to do away with that notion that women are their own enemies. Okay. And so we see a lot of women who are coaching, who are mentoring other young women. There's a lot being done. In the innovation space, we, we can talk about people like Regina Jari. We can talk about Ethel Kofi, who is in the tech space. We can talk about our own gifting auntie. We can talk about several other women who are coaching and mentoring other women to get to wherever they want to get Amma to. Duncan is a fabulous, Amma Duncan is a, a fabulous, fabulous woman, woman who is doing so well. God bring good morning. All over. <laughs> and so women Hi, are really doing a lot. Good, good morning, David. Welcome, Godwin. Let's hear you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. David, I'm absolutely happy with the lady sitting at your studio. I don't know where you got her to come. She's actually on point. And exactly doing what you have to. I've been to so many programs, so many launches about products for women. And most of the time, the way people do the presentation, the only factor is men doing this, men does that. But rather, this lady is telling us about the weaknesses and how we should come out. And I think it is very perfect. I think I'm even suggesting that the program that we have done with her today, if you can have this 
uh, 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 recordings and edited work and rather be playing it in the schools and at public places that women are and the young are. I think this, this speeches and whatever that she have done today is just on point. And I don't even want to repeat anything. Thank you very she much. She's on point. Thank and you she's the right person for this program. I, I don't think you should even bring her just only today. Find other times for her to be coming and be talking to the ladies for them to understand we are what grateful, they Godwin. actually Let's have to do. Sledge, and uh, we haven't heard the last of her yet. She'll be joining us again for more conversations. Sledge, good morning. You're welcome. Good morning, David. How are you? Sledge, good to have you, sir. Thank you. David, uh, the problem with our ladies is how they started. The orientation of the society. Because they were made to know that a man should cater for them. So they were not taught to bring out the best in them. Well, let me, what's so beautiful that I've seen a lady hustling, doing all what she, uh, she can do to be financially independent. I like the way the lady spoke and how she is trying to encourage ladies. But I also tell the ladies that, hey, forget, stop uh, thinking that men should take care of your needs and other things. The women can do better. They can do more than we, the men. David, about how many are they you? When the lady decides to work hard and get money, or you catch a baby, David. I hear you, Slash. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we have another caller on the line. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning, David. How could you be, huh? Yes, sir. Good to have you on the show. Let's say you could you be. Good to have you, my brother. Yes, um, I will take it from two angles. You know, we have a, uh, the traditional angle and uh, the spiritual or the, 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 the biblical angle. You know, there's a, a quotation that says that uh, um, a woman will leave his or her mother or her mother and join close to a man. And um, we men have taken it as something different. The moment... Oh, the moment the woman comes in, we see that we will lord over the woman. That's one aspect of it. And traditionally, let's go to Asapo. Let's go to uh, the typical Ashanti guys from uh, Ashdown. Who dare say about the Kasa He always wants to see himself as a superior. The woman doesn't have a word to say in anything that she would die, or she would do, or she does. So these are the things that happen. So I would say that, indeed, women are supposed to have their way. And I learned that what they are saying women can do, uh, men can, uh, what men can do, women can do is better. It has a different uh, understanding. I heard uh, those who went to Beijing were, sorry to say, uh, to LGBTQ, and they wanted to find their ground. That's why they came up with that statement. Another side, part of it, I was being told that uh, most of the women that went to Beijing were feminine, and they wanted to get their own way out of the issue. That's why they came out there. But I enjoy working. My wife is a hardworking woman. I'm so proud of her. And she, I'm expecting her to do more. It's not everything that I can do in the house. Yes, it's true. Sure, I well, could you be, uh, thank you very much for your contribution. We're grateful to you. Um, I have this message that says, Good morning, David and colleagues. Well, I believe being financially independent is a life skill regardless of your gender. In our social world, we need money to transact in all aspects of life, and hence um, it ceases to be a choice. So, yes, women, more than men, need financial independence to be able to do the many roles of women. It's even more compelling for us women because men can easily rely on their friends for support, but women can't borrow from their friends. From a personal you know, experience, I have always preferred walking to any place and spending whatever I want, and it keeps me in check because I know what I have to, to be financially responsible for my needs. However, because of our you know, societal norms which place the male as the head of the family, it's made some 
changes to women's financial independence, quite impossible in our part of the world. Nonetheless, we are gradually transforming the younger generations to understand that a man is supposed to compliment you, but not take your financial burdens as well. It's from Juliana of KNUST. Thanks, Juliana, for sending this in. Uh, let's, let's go to the WhatsApp console now. Good morning to you, David Akwete, the best morning show host in Kumasi Metropolis. Uh, and a very good morning to my dear Kunadu Yadom of ST Junction, Book Room. Dave, this is just a scale of IT designs inside that also. You see, I like the topic that you are discussing so much. But here's the case. You're talking about the women being financially independent. And then those who can even just raise themselves by means of taking care of themselves or a man being taken care of them. You see, for a man being taken care of a woman, it has been the norm and it has been the situation from the home, or let's say our setup since 19 Chiboy, or Penin Kojo Pencil up to today. That has been the norm. That is the way that we have even just brought out that a woman should even just wait for a man to even just what carry the, all the burdens of the woman. And it's in my interest to in Ghana that today, today, today in Ghana, if you approach a woman and you tell her you love her, it looks like you have, you have, you have, you have even just what, committed a crime. This, that is where, after one, two, three months, they start bringing up what, all their needs, all their burdens. They will just elaborate it and then put it at your doorstep. I of Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's a message, message that is on the WhatsApp uh, console, isn't it? That's the one I read. Okay, so uh, we'll be wrapping up shortly. We have another interview coming up your way. Uh, but Lusani says he has a question. Uh, yes, uh, my second question was about uh, Dr. McCauley's um, yeah. comment. Magdan. Uh. Magdan, yeah, yeah. That uh, a woman's money is a man. If you're a man, don't even think of going close to a, a, a woman's money. Whether you are making more, you are making less. Do you agree or you don't agree? I don't agree. So a, this is from a woman's I, I'm, point I'm of sure view. the woman out there might be say hey, hey <laughs> but yes I don't agree. Um I feel that financial independence has nothing to do with religion or um marriage. You know when we are talking about financial independence we just want us to be better. We want us to be comfortable. We want us to be secured. Now with the question you asked um whether the woman's money is her own money. If you are in marriage, marriage for me I know marriage is a partnership. And so if I'm doing well and you are doing well, then we will be able to raise the home well. I mean, why would I want to keep my money to myself and then just, if that happens, then it means that we are going back to depending on the man solely. And this is where a time would come that I would not have enough to be able to fend for myself in the absence of the man. And so if the man um, um, decides that, well, keep your money, I'm going to provide for the home, what is the woman also doing with the money? Are there other things the woman is doing with the money to also support in the home? Because we are talking about inclusion even in decision making. A time would come that if you, you are not bringing anything to the table, then it's like your concerns are not needed. And so maybe just to also um, 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 come in again with some of the comments that the other people shared. Financial independence has nothing to do with our religion. It has nothing to do with even gender. We want everybody to be financially independent. But today we are talking about women because the gap is so wide and is bringing a lot of financial abuse, is bringing a lot of exclusion into certain places that women must be in. We say we are creating equal opportunities, but then we can't assess these opportunities if the, 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 the gap is so wide. And so if I am a, a boy, if I'm a guy, if I'm a brother, I would really be interested in this situation because I don't want my sister or my wife to get to a point where they are solely dependent on a man or solely dependent on somebody. It's not even just about a man. Somebody can actually solely depend on parents. Because there are men and women who would live with parents forever because they are dependent on them and they cannot live independently. That one is also an issue. So it's not just about men or women relying on men. We are talking about where you are able to accumulate enough wealth, take care of yourself, be self-sufficient. You are not solely dependent on an extra something before you can be 
who you want to be. Live a comfortable life. And that is what we are talking about today. For women who are listening to us and have not made up their minds yet mm -hmm. to have this financial you know, independence or yeah. freedom we're talking about, speak to them for me. The economy is not going to get any better. I mean, as we are moving ahead, things are going to get worse. And as we are moving ahead, there are a lot of opportunities coming for women. I tell you, there are a lot of opportunities to build capacity, a lot of opportunities for you to become whatever you want to become. From Ghana's perspective, opportunities in the whole of Africa, all over the globe, because we want to achieve SDG 5, SDG 8, everyone is working to push the women agenda forward because we don't want to leave anybody behind. And so this is the time for you to take advantage of all of these financial opportunities. Get yourself, I mean, get your knowledge built up, develop yourself, rearrange your mindset, develop some spending habits that are very, very strategic and sustainable live within your means somebody would say even mm. live below your means mm. because if you are spending more than you are earning then definitely you are always going to be in debt sometimes somebody said something that he doesn't know how he survives because the kind of things he spends money on and the money he spends every month is more than how much he's earning so what happens you always be asking people for money so women this is the right time for us to aim at financial independence let's live a very comfortable life let us support the home with what we have you realize that you are fulfilled yourself because you don't need somebody to become whatever you want to be i asked an earlier question and um, time did not allow you to yeah. answer the time for a woman who wants to become financially independent wants to have a side hustle do all manner of things to su survive but their husband or the man in it, her life is not allowing it how should she go about it so if, if you are unable to spot that during relationship and you already find yourself in it, the best thing is communication. Letting the man understand the role. You know, we want to let the men also know that they have a role to play. I am not somebody who is always talking against men. I mean, talking against men and then just trying to say uh, that. You say always talk against men. Which means you talk against no, men like talking a, Not talking <laughs> against men and trying to say that maybe women should be here and the men should be here. Okay. We want them to know their role, fit into their place. And we also want to fit into our place and know our role in the home. So we want to have that conversation. Sit down with your husband and talk about it. And a key thing is you need to have a financial plan. Mm. If you and the husband you have a financial plan you know your financial goals for the next five years i'm not sure the husband will say that don't do this or don't also strive ahead and then be financially independent if there is no goal maybe now he thinks that you are okay so just stop whatever you are doing but you need to sit down and draw your long-term plan have a financial goal and put some strategies in place thank you very much for your time with us this morning well, and you've already had me. you've already had people say for example mm -hmm. that uh, they would want to have you back <laughs> so we need to consider all that but for women who are listening to you right now who would want to engage with you maybe yeah. they, they, they 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 didn't call or engage because yeah. their men are listening but they would <laughs> want your support your advice and uh, your mentorship give your number out how can they reach you yes so women saving africa is just opposite confidence hotel asuka when you get to the Kumasi Mall, we are just a walking distance, directly opposite um, Confidence Hotel. And you can always contact us on 020-4629-517. Wherever you are in Kumasi, 020-4629-517. Not just in Kumasi, everywhere in Ghana. Contact us. Let us let you know the programs we have. We have new projects coming up to support women and then other initiatives that would help build your capacity. So we are always available. Just contact us. Her name is Adjua Fosuya Owusu Ofori, and she's the founder and CEO of Women's Haven Africa. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Women, 2023, by its end, you should have your financial independence. We wish you well. God willing, we'll meet again tomorrow with more conversations. But later this morning, we'll be crossing over, crossing over to Joy 99.7, where, you know, after our expose on the rot at the DVLA, the DVLA has put in some measures. They'll be joining the team in Accra to share those measures with us as to whether it's going to help improve the situation at the DVLA. You tune in or you stay tuned in and find out. That comes up your way next on Love 99.5.